Hi, hello students, welcome, welcome to the world of zoology and you know myself Dr. Sai. Today I am going to explain you about the human digestive system, the digestion and absorp absorption chapter in uh, our first year CBSE. So today we are going to discuss the human digestive system in the neat aspect. Okay, so what is digestion basically? What is digestion? Uh, you know the different types of food materials we used to take generally and we will take uh, the different types of uh, the food particles which contains carbohydrates, proteins and fats, vitamins, minerals, water etc. All these are the different types of uh, the components present in the food what the human beings will take contain. And the food material is very much essential to give you the energy and the organic components in the food material also plays an important role in uh, the growth of the body and also repair of uh, the tissue, isn't it? In, if, in order to do some work, uh, in order to do the regular activities, energy is required and who is going to give that energy? Definitely the food material what we are taking. And if at all any repair is required in the body, any regeneration of the cells or tissues if, if required in the body, who has to do that particular function? Definitely the food material what we are taking. And that food material, we should be very cautious about the food material what we are taking, isn't it? Irrespective of the age, everyone should be very focused about their diet. That is very important. And the food material what we are taking contains so many components and all those components, they won't go ready-made into the blood. The components which are present in the food material should be broken down into simple food material. Then only they are able to enter into the blood. If those components are able to enter into blood, then only by oxidizing the, those particles which are present in the blood, energy is going to be released. So in order to utilize the energy, in order to perform the regular activities, you know that energy is very much important. And who is going to give that energy? oxidation of the food materials and in order to get oxidized first of all those components should present in the blood. In order to enter into the blood the component should be simple, the component should be simple. So breaking of the complex food materials into simple food materials is a very important aspect of uh, digestion. My dear friends and today I am going to explain you the digestion just now I told you that human physiology is going to play a tremendous role in the neat aspect. So here definitely 50% of uh, the uh, questions which are going to come from the zoology aspect, 50% of the questions uh, which are going to come from the zoology aspect are going to come from the human physiology. So human physiology plays a very important role in that today we are going to see the digestion, a very important chapter in the neat aspect also. Okay, so breaking of complex food material into simple food material is nothing but the digestion and who is going to play an important role in the digestion and what are the different types of digestion that we will see. Generally, as I said, the food material what the human being is taking contains carbohydrates, proteins and fats. These are the major components of uh, the food material, the carbohydrates, proteins and fats and as I said the carbohydrates and proteins and fats are not going to enter into the blood in their ready made form. Our body has to break them into simple food materials. How that breaking, breaking of the substances will take place? Breaking of complex food to simple food is nothing but digestion. For example, if you take any food particle into your mouth, uh, you will chew the food particle. Chewing of food uh, also comes under digestion. So digestion is basically of two types, mechanical digestion and uh, chemical digestion. Mechanical digestion is nothing but breaking of complex food into simple food mechanically. You know the tongue and teeth uh, plays a very important role in the formation of bolus. Bolus is nothing but the food particle which we are able to swallow. Teeth uh, is Teeth are going to play a very important role, tooth is singular, teeth plural, 
So teeth are going to play a very important role in breaking of complex food into simple food mechanically, simply mechanically. And once the food material enters into the alimentary canal, the muscles which are present in the alimentary canal also pushes the food from one part to the another part. It also comes under the mechanical digestion. Peristalsis also going to play an important role in the mechanical digestion. Previously, we have seen the cockroach. And even if you observe the earthworm also, gizzard contains so many muscles which helps in breaking of food material or pulverization of food material. That is the reason why the gizzard in earthworm is also called grinding mill of alimentary canal. Okay, so muscles are going to play important role. Here mechanically teeth are breaking down the food into simple food material. It comes under mechanical digestion. Let us move to the chemical digestion. Chemical digestion which takes place inside the body with the help of enzymes. With the help of enzymes, it comes under biochemical digestion. So the chemical digestion is also called biochemical digestion. Why? Because these enzymes are present inside the human being body. So inside the human being body, the food metals are converted to smaller food particles with the help of enzymes. So it is mechanical. I mean, it is chemical digestion like the two types of digestions are present. I want to tell only one thing. The food material what you are taking contains mostly the components uh, which are larger in size. So our body has to convert them into simple food particles. Then only they finally enters into the blood. So let us begin the digestive system which begins with mouth. Digestion. Digestive system begins with the mouth. You can see the mouth here which in turn opens into the oral cavity or buccal cavity. And this is the neck portion through which the esophagus passes, opens into the stomach and then into the intestine. Intestine is divided into two parts, small intestine and large intestine. I will tell all these parts one by one. Let us move to the oral cavity or buccal cavity. See this one, oral cavity or buccal cavity like this. Okay. So if you observe this one, upper portion, upper lip, lower lip, mouth is bound by upper lip and lower lips called labia. Okay. And uh, teeth and tongue are very important components present in uh, the mouth. And in addition to that, you know, a very important structure present inside the oral cavity of mammals especially is palate. P-A-L-A-T. Say this one, palate. Palate. P-A-L-A-T. Palate. And the palate is going to play important role in the development of human being. Why? Because, you know, we have upper nasal chamber and lower oral chamber. Nasal chamber and oral chamber are separated by palate. So palate is in palate is nothing but the roof of the oral cavity. Roof of oral cavity. And now please close your mouth, everyone. Everyone, please close your mouth. And then with the help of your tongue, you touch the roof of your uh, oral cavity. Touch the roof. If you move the tongue towards the teeth, just listen to me. Close your mouth. And with the help of tongue, you just touch the roof of uh, your oral cavity and just move the tongue along with the roof uh, towards the teeth. Where? Towards the teeth, some foldings. Uh, you can see some foldings like this. You can, you can uh, feel some foldings. And these are nothing but rugae, R-U-G-A-E. Rugae are nothing but the foldings. And this is an anterior part, this is called hard palate and this is the posterior part called soft palate. So if you move the tongue towards uh, the teeth along with the roof, uh, towards the teeth you can see these foldings, these foldings are called rugae as they are present in the palate, they are called palatine rugae. So palatine rugae plays an important role in holding the food material so that the teeth can accordingly act on the food materials. Okay, so palate and rugae are present towards the hard palate. And now move your tongue along with the roof towards the posterior end. Where the palate, where you can feel very smooth texture of the palate. Inside, towards the teeth, towards the teeth, hard texture is present. Some sort of hardness will be there, which is called hard palate. And posteriorly, softness will be there that is called soft palate. Soft palate, this is soft palate. And the soft palate ends with a structure called oola. So this one, U-V-U-L-A, oola. Soft palate ends with oola. When just, when you try to open your mouth and see in the mirror, at the end of the oral region, 
there is a soft structure which is hanging called ovula or soft palate. See my dear friends, these are external nostrils which in turn opens into internal nostrils. When you are inhaling the air, the air goes out from external nostrils to internal nostrils. When you are taking the food material, the liquid content or solid content, what you are taking, what you put inside your mouth, it should enter into the neck region, but it should not move again into the upper portion, into the nostrils, into the internal nostrils. So here, external nostrils are present, external nostrils opens into internal nostrils. So here, internal nostrils are present. And this is an area where you are taking the food material. So internal nostrils, and this is an area where you are taking the food like this. So the food material, at the time of swallowing a food material, there is a chance of having the movement of food even into this upper tract also. So in order to prevent the upward movement, or in order to prevent a, some sort of deformed movement, so in order to prevent the food material to enter into this upper portion, the soft palate is going to play a crucial role. Soft palate closes the internal nostrils when you are swallowing the food material. So food material definitely passes into this neck portion. In the neck portion, who is present? In the neck portion, in the previous slide we have seen, in the next, in the neck portion, you see this is one esophagus and an average of 25 centimeters pipe is present. And the pipe, what you are seeing here, what is this? This is trachea and just behind this, just behind this here, there is a portion called esophagus. So esophagus is present on the dorsal side, trachea is present on the ventral side, okay. So trachea is present on the ventral side and now esophagus, this is present on the dorsal side. When you swallow the food material, the swallowing of food, food material is called deglutition. Deglutition is nothing but the swallowing. D-E-G-L-U-T-I-T-I-O-N. Deglutition is swallowing of food material. When you swallow the food material, it enters into the esophagus. So esophagus also shows longitudinal foldings like this. So esophagus also shows the foldings. So slowly food material passes from esophagus to the stomach. So the next portion after the esophagus is stomach. Imagine the esophagus, as I said, this is a, a pipe-like structure. Imagine this is esophagus. Here there will be a sphincter and here also there will be a sphincter for esophagus. What is that? Just once again, what is that sphincter? What do you mean by sphincter? I will tell. So sphincter, this is upper esophageal, E-S-O-P-H-A-G-E-L, sphincter, S-P-H-I-N-C-T-E-R, upper esophageal sphincter and this one is called lower esophageal sphincter. Sphincter is nothing but the opening which is surrounded by muscle. If the opening surrounded by muscle is seen, you have to call it as a sphincter. You can see this in the previous slide. Say here, pharynx. And here you can see the pharynx followed by the sphincter. So here this is upper esophageal sphincter and this is the lower esophageal sphincter which is present near the heart, isn't it? This is the esophagus. Esophagus passes even through the thorax. And here the diaphragm, muscular partition, diaphragm is present. So esophagus makes a makes puncture, makes a hole, and then it enters into the stomach. And this opening is called hiatus. Opening is called hiatus. H I A T U S. H I A T U S. Hiatus is nothing but the opening through which the esophagus enters into the stomach. So this is an area where the stomach. So this is the area where stomach is present, and this is an area where heart should be present. So heart is present on left side almost and the stomach is also present on the left side. So nearer to the heart, this sphincter is present. That is the reason why this lower esophageal sphincter is also called cardiac sphincter, C-A-R-D-I-A-C, sphincter, S-P-H-I-N-C-T-E-R. Lower esophageal sphincter is also called cardiac sphincter. Why? Because this sphincter is located near the heart esophagus opens into the next portion called stomach but I don't want to start the stomach now why because so much stuff is there which is waiting in the oral cavity you know the place where some space is present between lips and teeth and that space is called vestibule you can see it in this slide so vestibule is nothing but the space see this one vestibule the space which is present between the lips and teeth or cheeks and teeth. 
you know if at all any chocolate or any chewing gum or bubble gum something like that or when the class is going also students will put chocolate in, inside their mouth and used to enjoy the class the place where you will put the chocolate you know the place between this one what is this one St the place present between teeth and cheeks that is nothing but the vestibule vestibule is an area and now if you observe the oral cavity or buccal cavity where an important components are present something like the first one teeth you know number of teeth are present in uh, the human being how many teeth are present in adults and how many teeth are present in uh, how many teeth are present in how many teeth are present in adults and young one how many teeth are present maximum number of teeth are reported in which animal minimum number of teeth are present are reported in which animal you know there are different types of teeth are there like lophodont bunodont cecodont solenodont different types of teeth are present and in carnivores a special type of teeth are present in case of human beings uh, you know different types of teeth are present how many times the teeth are replaced is there any animal which is, which can replace the teeth for a number of times is there any animal without teeth we are going to see all this in my next video Thank you.